Mike Tyson enters the ring two days short of his 31st birthday with his very future as a top-line heavyweight on the line. As a young savage of the ring, remember, he terrorized this division. Now, as a newlywed with his fourth child on the way, has the rage inside gone? Or are we about to see a rebirth of the old Tyson, a sharper, less complacent Tyson, turning back the clock to wreak revenge? My theory, he says, is destroy or be destroyed. We are about to find out. But I'm sure he's going to have the fury. He only knows one way to fight, and that's to be aggressive, to go out, to, you know, to try and destroy. And that's exactly what he's going to try and do. I'm sure he's going to be set a furious pace in the early rounds. He wants to reverse everything that happened on November 9th. He wants to regain the title, and he wants to do it in good style. But has he gone back to the drawing board? Has he changed the mistakes? Can he make it different this time? They're the questions. You know, has he got the answers? The last time he came in the ring first as a challenger, he absolutely demolished Frank Bruno. But this is a different matter again. Every seat is sold. Stars like James Kahn and Michael J. Fox and Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, they're all here. He looks relaxed, Glenn. He does, he looks very relaxed, but here's the man who's who's just been relaxed all week and we saw him singing hymns in the dressing room. What an unbelievable character he is, Evander Holyfield. You can say that again. Holyfield who performed what was little short of a boxing miracle seven months ago. Bookmakers made him 25 to 1 to win that one. Fans were so worried for his health they sent him get well cards before the fight and look what happened. We reckoned without his pride, his courage, his skills, his unbelievable willpower. A dignified, serene man who says he finds his strength through God. But can he be as good again as he was on November the 9th last year? Well, can he, Glenn? Well, he has, he believes so much in God. He has such unbelievable faith. You know, he's a fighting man, but he has such unbelievable faith. But you know, he believes he can do it. He's been so relaxed, so relaxed in the, in the whole build-up. You know, and he says, listen, I've done the work. I've got tremendous faith. I can't do it if I just pray. If I work, if I do everything that I've got to do, and then I pray, I'm unbeatable. I can't be beaten. Mike Tyson cannot beat me. And that's the way he's acted you know, in, the, in, in this whole build-up. He's acted like a man who just believes, who knows he's got Mike Tyson's number. But has he? He says, it doesn't matter what state Tyson's in, I shall fight my fight regardless. Now, how many Tyson opponents have you seen get in the ring with a smile on their face, bouncing around and looking happy to be there? <laughs> None. No, just one. Evander Holyfield. Normally they're scared to death, but he just, he, he believes he can win. He believes nothing Mike Tyson can do can beat him. And I think you know, he has that unbelievable confidence. It's, it's tremendous to watch a man who believes in his own ability that much. And everyone here is hoping beyond hope they are going to witness a fight that would maybe, maybe, just rank alongside the great fights of history like the Frazier Ali series and Foreman and Ali. Something that will go down for years to come and that people will talk about for years to come. The city of In association with Showtime Event Television, the MGM Grand and Gold Premium Beer. This bout coming away is sanctioned and directed under the auspices of the World Boxing Association, President Alberto Mendoza, representing the WBA, Dr. Elias Cordova, Supervisor Leonard Nipper Reed, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners Nat Carasali, Lorenzo Fertitta, Luther Mack, and Dr. James May. The executive director, Mark Ratner. Positions at ringside, we have Drs. Flip Omansky, James Game, Al Capanna, and Robert Voy. 
Diane Keepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Jane Broadfoot and James Cavan, and our judges scoring this bout from ringside, who will determine the outcome should we go to a decision. Dwayne Ford, Chuck Jumpa, and Jerry Roth. All right, fans, here we go. The time has come. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, it is showtime. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, the third man in the ring working in this is 96th world title bout, Mills Lane. <laughs> Presenting to you first, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing his traditional black trunks and hailing from Catskill, New York. He weighed in at already 218 pounds with a record of 45 wins, two losses. He has 39 big wins coming by way of knockout. The youngest man ever to win the heavyweight title. He is looking to exact his revenge and regain his championship tonight. Challenging for his third heavyweight crown. Here is the current WBA number one contender. Tyson. Can Holyfield be as good again? Can Tyson reignite the old flames? Last time Holyfield refused to be intimidated. That stuff he said doesn't work with me. Tyson has 20 first round wins on his record. Here we go again. The rematch we've waited a long time to see. And from early on in the first contest, Holyfield sent out the message to Tyson that he wasn't going to be dominated. Tyson looking to let go with that left hook. Are we going to see Tyson get off with the old four-punch combinations that were a feature of his work in his heyday? Oh, 
Mills Lane very quickly establishing his control. I think that's something he's got to do. He doesn't want it to, to tangle. He doesn't want them to get in too involved and be a physical fight. He wants to, to get them to break cleanly straight from the off. There was a lot of holding and spoiling in the first fight, in the early rounds anyway. And that was how Holyfield managed to just foil a lot of Tyson's work. And then he dominated on the outside. In that first fight, Holyfield seemed to be armour-plated against Tyson's power. From the Tyson camp have said they're trying to get Tyson to start throwing combinations, to throw his punches in clusters like he didn't do in the first fight. But is he going to find the jab, which was always so good in his early career? He threw everything off the jab, powerful weapon, he's got to find that. There's Ty Holyfield again, making Tyson miss and hitting it with a right-hand counter. That was a feature of their first battle. There he is again with the right hand. Holyfield is such a good technician. It's very early stages, but Holyfield looks very physically strong. He looks more intent to take the fight to Tyson. Holyfield says his motivation is to make sure everyone knows that the first result was no fluke. Gets in with two, good punches to the head. Tyson has got his gloves held pretty high. I'm not sure they landed flush. But the more positive start has come from Evander Holyfield. This is really taking the fight to Tyson. Is he overconfident? Is he going to walk on to something? That is always the danger when you're talking about Tyson's mega power. If it was a popularity contest in here, in any case, Holyfield would have already won. Massive chance ringing around the arena for him, and they can hardly hear the bell that goes to end the first round, which I believe Holyfield did enough to win. Yes, that was his round. He was, he was pushing Tyson back. I think he knows that if he pushes Tyson onto the back foot, Tyson can't work effectively. Well, Tyson did not come out, as many of us thought, really fast okay. and with Stay guns with blazing. Jab. Stay with the jab, soon you're stiff jabbing good. I want you now jab for the throat. Jabbing for the throat. You're moving good. Keep off the center. Keep moving and punch. You got to punch. No wait on it. The voice of Richie Giacchetti, who's back in the Tyson corner. And he was asking him to jab, that's what he has to do. Tell him to jab for the throw, which really hurts an opponent. They can't do anything when they're winded with a punch like that. You just wonder what mental scars have been left in Tyson's mind from the first battle. It was a good shot, Holyfield landed in that first round. Here's round two. It's due, of course, to go 12 rounds. Still no sign of that Tyson jab. Tyson already complained a little bit to the referee there. Cut has opened well, already. He's got a cut, and this time it's by the right eye. There was a clash of heads there. Now then, does the referee see that as an accidental or deliberate clash of heads that's what we need to know it has to go four completed rounds under the rules otherwise it could possibly be declared a no contest we hope that doesn't happen tyson dabs away at the cut he was cut remember in training for this fight he was cut in the first battle between these two and you think this is where doubts are going to come into Tyson's mind. He hasn't started that well already, he's got a cut. And he's again, he's looking at the referee and complaining. But this is interesting because, of course, the Tyson camp protested about the original choice of referee Mitch Halpin. And Tyson now wants some help from Mills Lane, but is he giving distress signals out? 
Well, there looks to be, but very interesting that Tyson has been bullied in there. Holyfield really taking the fight to him. Some damage by that right eye for Tyson, who did get in with a right hand. Holyfield superbly conditioned. Only in, he's got three gears hard, harder, and hardest, they say. And that's the way he'll fight. This is a man, remember, who fought for 13 years for nothing, Evander Holyfield. Never mind, he's got $150 million out of this business in his bank account. He relishes the battle. He has amazing will, and he's taken control early here against Tyson, who so far has looked flat and distressed. It's getting rough in there. Mills Lane just taking the time out, having a talk to them. They're starting to wrestle and pull about in there. There's Tyson using his jab. Glenn, you get the impression at this stage that Tyson needs the morale booster of a punch that maybe just wobbles Holyfield a, a little, puts a dent in him. Yes, he needs to get something. That the cut looks as if it's getting worse. He's just not getting his punches off. And when Holyfield starts, he's getting off first. It's all a, a little bit too messy in this round. But Holyfield much the stronger. Two rounds gone. Tyson does not look a happy man. He's got a cut to the right eye. In the first fight, it was a cut to the left eye. Now, how bad is that? It looked bad. It looked to be bleeding quite a bit. And there you hear a little yelp as they pushed to try and close that yeah, cut. Fine, the only way you can wrong. close the cut, you need the adrenaline, you've got you've to put pressure on. Now he's trying to push Richard Giacchetti out guys. the way. You can see Tyson now shouting to the referees, not happy. He feels that Holyfield butted him. Yes, it looked as if that's what that's what he was trying to say there. The heads did come close there. That could well have been the, the top of Holyfield's head, but I don't think it was deliberate. He was he was trying to, to load up for a left hook. The situation here is if the fight has to be stopped because of that cut and it's deemed accidental, before four rounds, it will be a technical draw or no contest. After that, they go to the scorecards. Now, Tyson goes for it at the beginning of round three listen to the crowd suddenly Tyson catches fire well this is where Tyson has to show character if he can regain the title he's coming out full of aggression in this round but what answers has Holyfield got can Tyson sustain that aggression though A lot of people say about Holyfield, well, he doesn't produce good performances twice running. Only a glancing blow with the left hook from Holyfield. Again, a little bit of rough stuff inside. Tyson just trying to use the forearm there, pushing Holyfield off with the forearm. Good right hand from Tyson. He's done better in this third round. Is he just beginning to warm to the task a little more? Holyfield says Tyson had better hope that he can produce a better performance because he knows the last one wasn't good enough against me. Look at that from Holyfield. That was good, mixing it up well there. In the first fight, he threw good body punches, Holyfield, that landed. Right hand from Tyson, looked a great shot, but Holyfield just sucked it up again. This man, whose wife is a specialist in pain management. But this has been a, a much better round for Tyson. He's getting off first, he's landed with effective punches. Oh, and 
and some nasty stuff in there they need to be a bite almost Holyfield is very unhappy look at this it looked as if Tyson bared his teeth at one stage in the exchange yes I think he, he bit his ear that's what Holyfield was in a lot of pain from that you see the blood on the ear that was definitely a bite Well, feelings are running very, very hot indeed in there. Holyfield was outraged by that. Now, what is the referee going to do about that? One point deduction for Tyson. One point deducted from Mike Tyson for biting Holyfield's ear. Now, let's take a look again. Yes, it's, it's just here he gets into the position there watch you see he stares there there he bites him there you see him lift his teeth and Holyfield in agony at that point trying to rip free in a, an awful lot of pain well this is getting like a street fight it'll take more than that to stop Holyfield going on but we have all kinds of chaos Mark Ratner is there the Nevada Commissioner on the far side we've got the doctor in the ring as well <laughs> this is only round three what next now could Tyson even be disqualified I'm sure that possibility is very very real should he be disqualified well, it was blatant. I mean, it, it was a terrible thing to do. And there was an awful lot of blood there. It looked a really bad injury. Well, after all the build-up this fight has had and all the money it's generating around the world, it would take a brave referee to end it by disqualification at this point. But we've had a long, long break here and a lot of discussion going on. But I think the fight is going to continue. Well, this is where Holyfield will need that pain management that his wife is a doctor in, because he must be in pain from that. Well, this is a real grudge match now. And Tyson again looks as if he was about to have another fight. Holyfield is furious. Tyson clearly feels he needs to do something to rock Holyfield's composure. But he's really going a long, long way beyond the Queensbury rules in doing it. Holyfield's talking to him now. Well, that was an extraordinary round. It was an outrageous foul by Tyson, really. It was terrible. It showed the real brute, the beast that, that he is. And I think you know, this is a sport and you shouldn't ever have to revert to that especially in this level of boxing it really showed for what he is I and mean, that was terrible to do that to a sportsman like Holyfield and there he is he really sunk his teeth in there well the crowd are booing because they've just seen the slow motion on the big screen now what's going on in the ring there seems to be some kind of altercation going on it looks like he could have been disqualified the fight could be over certainly the, the Holyfield camp had their arms in the air at one point there and everybody jumped into the ring we have confusion here at the moment about what exactly has happened Holyfield's camp threw their arms off now we've got a fight going on in the ring Tyson. various camp. Tyson wants to join in with it oh and this is getting totally out of control now Tyson is the one who started and he's the one who's furious. He's the one that's causing all the problems. He's trying to get at Holyfield here. And I wonder whether this fight will be able to go on after all of this. I don't think it can. I think that Tyson may well have been disqualified. These are sad and ugly scenes. We have had no official announcement, but certainly Holyfield and his camp believe that they have won the fight. 
we await clarification. Tyson certainly wanted to continue the argument and looked to be engaging some of the Holyfield camp followers in a separate fight. Because he was the one, he was trying to get at Holyfield at that point. And I think there was people trying to stop him and it, it all broke loose. But he was the one that was out of control. Look at the injury, Ian. That's a, a terrible injury to the ear. Well, it looks like a bit of the ear has been absolutely bitten off, doesn't it? It does, it looks like he's took a chunk out there. And there he took a second bite, as I thought. He bared his teeth again. And I think for that second bite, Mills Lane has been left with no alternative but to disqualify Mike Tyson. Although we await an official announcement. But if we look at the, the injury to Tyson, he's got a terrible cut on his right eye, which you know, I don't think he'd have been, uh, he'd have went on too long after that. I think that maybe have been uh, the panic setting in to Tyson, knowing he's on the verge of defeat. Well, now there are microphones going on in the ring. For well, the fans who've paid up to $1,500 and some of them more in the black market to see this have seen a very sorry spectacle. It is over. Holyfield is leaving the ring. Well, the first fight was a classic. The second fight we were so excited about, but it has ended in the most controversial sad and sorry circumstances nobody's been disqualified in a heavyweight title fight for more than 50 years Joe Lewis against Buddy Bear we think we're checking the records that's terrible isn't it Glenn it really is. Uh, that was against a uh, you know, great fighter like Holy Fighter. He, he, he will not want to win the fight like that. He will want to beat Tyson fair and square. And I think really all Tyson did was not allow that to happen. It was terrible. It showed the, the, a brute, an animal in Tyson. You know, he couldn't win fairly, so he had to try and do that. He not only bit Holyfield once, he did it a second time. Mills Lane drafted in as the last minute. I told him, do not do that again. If you do, you're gone. So he could have continued. The physical condition of Evander Holyfield was such a view that he could have continued had he not disqualified Tyson. Well, I didn't ask the doctor. I didn't. I never. I never reached that point. I wasn't going to ask the doctor. That wasn't a question. That kind of foul would be. You got to take a. a, a, a you got to take a position sometime, somewhere. That was it. Pandemonium breaking out here as Mike Tyson is leaving the ring, and we'll continue with Mills Lang. As you see, people getting knocked over. Our camera goes down. Mills, let me continue here. Mike Tyson's people and Tyson are going to say, I'm sure you didn't call a foul on the headbutt, which caused the eye, and this could have been a retaliation by Tyson. I, I called it a butt. An but you didn't take a point. An unintentional butt, you don't take a point. An unintentional butt, unless it's occurred the second time. An unintentional butt, it, that if, if, you go to the, if, if you fight stop, you go to the scorecards after four rounds. There's a difference between an unintentional butt and a bite. Do you feel as though that's what Tyson was doing, however, that he was retaliating? I do not know. You'll have to ask him. I don't speculate. I do not know the answer to that. Obviously, disappointment, Mills. Got to be disappointing for you for have, to have it come to a conclusion like this as well. You know, you do. You play the hand you dealt and do the best you can with the card. That's all I can tell you. All right, Mills Lane. Thank you for your time. Let's... Well, how ironic that Mills Lane, the referee brought in after the Tyson camp protested about the original choice, Mitch Halpin, is the referee who has disqualified Mike Tyson. This is, uh, well, it's another sensational ending in its own way, but a sensation we did not want. No, really, it, it, you can't describe it. I mean, the people who have paid an awful lot of money, it's a massive, massive event, and Mike Tyson has... has spoiled it all you know and showed himself to be a terrible character in there a character in this profession you know a real a beast
who shouldn't be allowed to box. It was a, a terrible thing he did. Yes, he looked, didn't he, like a spoilt bully who couldn't have his own way in there. Holyfield had dominated him largely, and he'd taken a few punches that Tyson had thrown at the start of the third round. They hadn't made a dent either, so in he went with the teeth. That Twice. Was, you summed it up there, you, you summed up the reactions of a bully who just doesn't get his own way and has to do something like that. Holyfield, let me tell you, and we still await an official announcement, by the way, has retained the WBA Heavyweight Championship on a disqualification. In an amazing third round. There have been one or two scuffles breaking out, not very many, I'm pleased to tell you, and they're now under control among the big crowd here as well, among the more volatile of the uh, rival supporters. Holyfield has gone off in absolute disgust. You're, you're right what you say, Glenn, he would not have wanted to retain the title in that, in that fashion at all. He would have wanted to go on and prove conclusively his domination of Tyson well you saw his reaction after the first one he was ready to go on I mean it was the first one was terrible and yet he, he still would have went on a really bad in, uh, it looked like a chunk out of his ear and yet he was ready to go on again and he's, he's a warrior you know he's a fighter he knows there's rough stuff but I mean that was just really far beyond anything that sh that should go on you know and really he, he doesn't belong in this profession well, absolutely extraordinary of all the scenarios we thought of this week. All right, Evander Holyfield, two bites on each, each side, one piece is missing out of here, your plastic surgeon said. Your reaction? Well, first of all, I had to get praise for the Lord. I, I, you know, Jesus Lord, you know, I'm still the champion, you still get the glory. And, uh, you know, the things that happened, it didn't have to happen. Uh, you know, you know. I was beating him, and you know he spit out of my mouth and he bit me in the ear. Is that the act of a crazed man? Because to beat you twice, I mean to bite you twice, is a little crazy. Well, you know the whole thing is that you know, you know, in the first one, you know, my corner, uh, you know, told me to uh, just keep cool, and I, you know, I, I, I thought about that, you know, a distraction would happen, and I, and and his prophets told me to, you know, just, you know, just breathe deep and just concentrate on Jesus. Then I went back out there again, and I caught him with good shots. And he bit my ear on purpose again. But how can he bite your ear with a mouthpiece? You spit it out he, in the mouth? He spit the mouthpiece out. He spit the mouthpiece out and, and, and bit me on the ear for the last time. You know, the whole thing is that, the whole thing is that, you know, really, he, the only chance that he thought he could is just to go. My whole thing is that, you know, the whole thing is my ear bleeding. And, uh, and this guy continued to foul. You know, I'm, I'm thankful that we have a referee like Mill Lane see the situation that this thing is in tension. And, you know, it's just, it's just amazed when... Would this, would this rule out uh, a rematch? It's stupid to ask you right now for a rematch. Because this guy went and lost his marbles. Well, is, is, know, is a rematch possible, or are you so mad you wouldn't even think about it? Well, that? you know, the whole thing is that, you know, I, I have to concentrate and I have to think, you know, I have to think about the situation. But the, the big thing is to, to you know, a rules and regulation, mandatory things. Uh, but the rules, you got to understand when a person deliberately bites you constantly and, try, and trying to and trying to break my arm because... You know, in the corner, he's just doing illegal tactics. You know, mill lanes, so you don't break. You know, the whole thing is that I mean, there's just an easy way to get out of the fight, the foul, because you know you're going to get disqualified instead of fighting through. I'm saying that don't show no courage whatsoever. Everybody know how to get out of the fight. All you have to do is foul. You'll get yourself out. Then you can say, well, he didn't beat me. Would you say this is the act of a desperate man? Would you say he was desperate in there? That is that the word you think to cause a guy to do something so unusual? Well, just the whole thing is that, you know, I, I truly believe that Fear, fear, fear itself calls people to do the easiest thing, the quickest thing to get out. I'm saying the whole thing is that we in a fight already. So what, why do you have to bite somebody? If you feel that you can whoop me, why you can't whoop me with the gloves on? Well, this is a boxing match. This is not a, a, a rumble. And when, when, when the fight is over, then you get brave and you really want to fight. I'm saying you don't, you don't, you had a chance to fight. You know why you got to bite on my ear? The whole thing is that you know it, 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 it's not real. You know the whole thing is that. I just give praise to the Lord that it is not worse than it is. I thought my ear had fell off.
Well, your plastic surgeon here says a piece is missing out of your ear, which means you'll have to have a plastic repair. And either either ear, since human bites are so dangerous, have to be taken care of tonight at the hospital. I look forward to going to the hospital. Good thing right. I got a doctor. All right. Bills Good. Lane disqualifies Mike Tyson for biting Evander Holyfield in both ears. The winner by way of disqualification, and still the WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Evander, the real deal, Holyfield. Well, I hate to say it, but it was a coward's performance, that by Tyson. You're going to get people now talking about a third match between these two. In my view, Tyson does not deserve one. He certainly doesn't. For me, he does not deserve to be back in the ring. You're, all, all the time we were brought up with the customado thing about the, the hero and the coward and the teachings of D'Amato that how a fighter would react under them circumstances and his own pupil reacted the way he did. You know, he reacted like a coward. And it was, I mean, I think he thought about it because I'm sure at the beginning of the third round he tried to come out, they stopped it. He came back to have his gum shield replaced. So you only wonder if at the beginning of the third round he'd already thought that he was going out. It was a planned thing to try and bite him. There's the man at the centre of the controversy, Mills Lane. But for our money, Glenn and I here, he did exactly the right thing. He was given no choice by Tyson. He gave him the benefit of the doubt the first time with the awful bite which removed part of Holyfield's ear. And then, I mean, that's what was so cynical. Tyson deliberately did it again. He almost asked to be thrown out, didn't he? He did it. Holyfield said the right thing there. He did it because he was scared. He was scared of the beating that Holyfield was going to put on him. So that's why he did it again. He wanted out of the ring. Here's John Horn, Tyson Camp. They got nothing to do with his arms, his legs, his hands, his body, nothing. You don't need to scream at me. You don't need to scream at me. Mike got a cut over his eye. Mike got a three-inch cut over his eye. That the blood will penetrate to his eye, blur his vision, and everything. Now, I understand... Mills Lane, let me clarify it for you, since you don't know what Mills Lane has said to us. Mills Lane said... He didn't disqualify him for the first bite because he was willing to let that go with the two-point deduction. The second bite, however, at the end of the round was what he said he had just had enough. Well, I'm gonna have, I, I have to see everything involved first. I can't comment on, them, on, on no bite or whatever the case may be. All I know is Mike got a three-inch gash over Are you unhappy with the referee, in Mills Lane? Not at, not at all. There's nothing. No, 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 not at all. I'm unhappy with all the head butts and stuff for two fights. Mike done been cut four times by this guy, neither time by a punch. Now, you tell me what that, what that is. That's all I know. Everything else I'm going to have to see about, I'm going to have to go over. I don't know nothing about that. But he turned into a street fight a long time ago. The tapes clearly show that I'm being told in the first fight that Mike caused the butts, and, and that was ascertained. In this one, it was an accidental butt, or though it appeared, or though it appeared, what would you have liked to have seen done at that moment? It's too late after the fact to bite somebody. What would you have liked to have seen at that time? All I know is this. There was nothing wrong with Evander Holyfield that would have kept him from performing. That's all I know. Okay. So, I, so I, I can't but, come But you're not you unhappy know. with the referee? This was your referee? No, I'm not unhappy because I don't even know the order terms yet. I, everything happened so quickly, I don't even know all the conditions. All I know is my fighter got a three-inch cut over his eye. Okay. Can, can we talk to Mike Tyson? No, not right now. Mike has John? a three-inch cut he has to take care of. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, John. Don King. Obviously, not the way that anybody expected that this was going to go. Very disappointing to everybody who bought the fight and the, those in attendance here. Your thoughts on this disqualification? Well, I think that the headbutts was there, and I think that when he had the headbutts, and as he had had headbutts prior to that, it should have been some type of a, a point taken away or something to a, to a acknowledge these headbutts because this was said so in priority before the fight started to watch the headbutts. You know what I mean? And so it's very difficult when two athletes are fighting. You know what I mean? And things can happen, but these headbutts seemingly... Don, but the fact of the matter is, 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 is the headbutts, yes, it is a problem. Everybody will acknowledge that Holderfield is... In, in in violation with the headbutt the proper reaction however is not to bite correct well i don't the, the proper reaction is not to bite you know what i mean but i guess when a guy feels that he's pleading with the referee to give him some consideration and he don't get the consideration then he just goes beyond reason i mean you must be able to deal with reason and practicality but you got two athletes in there highly passionate uh, very hot ready to fight and fight they would do it a fight was just beginning i don't know why it was, which would be stopped what well because Holyfield it was determined by uh, 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 Mills Lane uh, you uh, well, let me stop you right there before we go on to that you're saying Mills Lane should not have stopped the fight on the second no, I, fight no when, when Holyfield got bit 
the Britain. Bill's lane said he took a point from Mike Tyson. And a second point. And, and the word of the second point. And then at the end of the round, Mills Lane uh, has said that Tyson bit him on the other ear, which in this instance I believe would be the left ear. Two bites on the ear. I, I didn't see it, so I can't comment on That's that. That's why he disqualified. Well, I don't know. I'd have to see that before I make any comments. I don't want to be irrational. Okay. Let's move on. Where does this leave Mike Tyson and his career, and will there be a third bout between these two, and do you think you could ever put anything like that together? Well, I want to find out first the facts, and then if you find out the facts, you see what you can do. I think that uh, when a fighter like Mike Tyson or Holyfield find that they've been wrong and they're not getting the consideration that they think they should have, then they try to take it in their own hands, and that's, that's not always the right thing to do. But nevertheless, that's what be done when you have people out there that's in, a, in, in, in this type of uh, atmosphere and climate, and it looked like they were just beginning to fight. Could you ever, do you feel, convince Holyfield to take this fight again? I don't know. I don't know whether I can or not until we find out what all of the evidence is and find out what is happening, what actually happened. You know what I mean? I'm just like a fan as anyone else at this particular time. It would be a terrible time. disappointment yeah, if there wasn't I, another correct. Yeah, it certainly would be because these guys certainly don't prove that they're two good athletes, but they got to be able to fight and they want to fight and look like that's what they were doing. I didn't know. I thought after the points was taken, that was the punishment meted out for whatever the, uh, the error was in Mike Tyson. What happened after that? I don't know, because when he sat down, the bell rang, he went to the corners, I thought they was coming back off the fight, and all of a sudden, it was the DQ. I know you don't make this decision, but should these fighters be paid for this evening's work? There's some 60-some-odd million dollars who went out today, out of your pocket. Yes, they should be paid. They came and they fought. You know what I mean? It's, it, boxing is unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen in a boxing match. That's what makes it so great. But the fact of the matter is, well, I think we should first try to find out what happened before we start making judgment. What do you say to the folks who bought the fight who are terribly disappointed who are watching this right now? I'm disappointed myself because of the outcome. I want to see this fight go to the to the finale. You know what I mean? This is a, it was a silent and the fury. It was something that everybody purported and recognized as going to be a great event. And then here comes the headbutts, and then here comes the retaliation for the headbutts. But after you get taken the points from the man, I just think that uh, they should have been able to fight. You, if you get a headbutt or a low blow, you get five minutes to recuperate. I think it should have took another step to say, give them five minutes to recuperate or something to let these people get their money's worth and be able to deal with this fight. As the man in charge of this show, I've got to put you on the spot right here. What will you do in the upcoming moments to make sure that we have a word with Mike Tyson before we leave the air? Well, I'm going to do everything I can to talk to Mike Tyson, to let Mike Tyson tell his side of the story. I think it's only fair and proper that he should do that, and I would do everything I can to get him to do that. Also, I'd like to get to talk to the commission and uh, find out what their uh, judgment is on, on a situation of this type. And when uh, this has happened, after you take the points, to come back and take the fight, too. I don't understand it, so maybe they can explain it to me. Well, as you say, only in America, and only in America. Well, Jim Gray was the reporter there talking to Don King, and before that, John Horn, the co-manager of Mike Tyson. Now, let's have a look again. At, uh, the headbutt in the second round, which opened the gash on your eye. Tell us about that first, please. Um, he butted me um, in the first round, but then he butted me again in the second round. Then as soon as he butted me, I watched him. He had me holding it, and he looked right at me, and I saw him, and he was going for, and he kept going flying. He butted me again. He kept going down and coming up, and he charged into me. And no one warned him. No one gave, took any point for him. What am I to do? This is my career. I can't continue getting butted like that. Right. I got children to raise. And this guy keeps butting me, trying to cut me and get me stopped on cut. I got to retaliate. Now, immediately, you stop. You stop fighting immediately right there and you turned to Mills Lane and you said what and he the result was he did nothing but what did you say to Mills right at that time I don't remember what I said I told him that he buttoned but I know I complained about being butted and we go and we complained about the um the first fight listen Holyfield's not the tough warrior everyone says he is he got a little nicks on him there and he quit I got an eye I got one eye I got one eye he's not impaired he got ears I got one eye big deal if he take one I got another one I'm ready to fight he didn't want to fight I'm ready to fight him right now yeah, Mills Lane no Mills Lane stopped the fight it wasn't Holyfield who stopped oh he didn't want to fight let me ask let me we don't know what Mills did don't, okay. don't put nothing okay. on okay. Mills okay. well Mills said he stopped the fight you bit him was that a retaliation for the eye when you bit him in his ear regardless of what I did he bit but me for two fights but you got to address it Mike Why I, did did you address, no, I did address it I addressed it in the ring why, why did you do that, though, Mike? I mean, was look that the proper me. response? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I got to go home. My kids are going to be scared of me. Look at me, man. What are you going to do now in terms of your career, Mike? Well, you continue to fight. Okay. Okay. 
Well, extraordinary stuff there from Mike Tyson. He's trying to justify himself. He's saying there that uh, he got no protection from the referee and he retaliated in the only way he knew how. What's your comment on that, Glenn McCrory? I don't think there, there can be any justification. He was a frustrated fighter because he was on the way, in my opinion, to, to defeat. And we just saw that when he did when he did fight and he actually came in with the head first you know, he duck, ducked his head he tried to catch him with the head and then when that missed he, he circled around and he bit him it was just the